Hey friends, just want to make a very quick video on the little pro tip that I taught myself on how to never forget radiographic projections. We've all been there, right? You first learn your projections where you know exactly where to center, know exactly how much to collimate, how much to tilt the patient, where the anatomy needs to be raised, what tube angle you need to use. It's a lot. Okay, I get it. And it's no easier for me than it is for you. Now, all this came from a lot of frustrations I had when I first went on clinical and started when I come across an x-ray that maybe I hadn't done in a while and maybe I'd forgotten my technical parameters. And it's not like your exposures where you have an exposure chart somewhere in the department that you can just look up. The positioning details are just something that you're meant to know. And if you forget it, it can get a little awkward. So what do you do about it? For me, I really found this anatomy app useful. It's called Essential Anatomy 5. And I have it both on my phone and my laptop. And this app really is quite something. And you can add different muscle layers. You can add or subtract different systems in the body, whether it's a circulatory system or the digestive system, for example. And you can zoom in and out and maybe hide or fade other things for better focus um, and all, all, that kind of, all that kind of stuff. But I don't really use any of those features. I only really use the plain skeleton, which by the way means you don't have to download this particular app because it is bloody expensive. And so you can get any free anatomy app you can find and it does the same job. I just got this when it was on sale a few years ago. Anyways, here's a few ways of how I use the app. So let's say you get a pelvis x-ray that's also requested inlet and outlet views in addition to SI joints. And also, let's say you've forgotten your centering points and how much you need to angle your patient for each view. The app can save you. When well, you open it up, let's say you zoom into the pelvis and let's actually start there. If this is what you need, then you can clearly see that the top of your collimation would just be the iliac crest. And the inferior aspect would be the pubic symph. But since we can't go around palpating people's pubic symph areas, what's the next best thing? Well, according to this, it just kind of lies in with the greater trochanter, which I know I can easily find. And I'll just make sure that the bottom of my collimation is that plus or minus one or two centimeters lower if possible. And that's my standard AP pelvis done. Now, what about the inlet and outlet views? Well, I guess the first question is if you remember which one is angled up or down. The way I remember these is that the inlet view has the word in. And if I think of myself as throwing a basketball in a hoop, the hoop being the pelvic brim, that's my inlet view. And so if I do that, I have to angle down or quarterly. And the other one, the outlet view is just the other way around, which is kind of angled up. And that's how I remember it. If you have another way of remembering it, I actually like to know. So comment down below. And the way I know how much to angle is to literally tilt the patient down, which is simulating an angle of the tube. And I know how much this angle of the tilt is, which roughly corresponds to about 40 degrees of the tube. Now, the first few times that you do it, it actually helps to know the correct angle. So you can get an idea of how much tilt equates to what angle. But I found that after a few tries, it works reasonably well. Okay, so if when I angle about 40 degrees caudal, I can also see that my centering points would essentially be the ASIS. And that's why this is such a useful tool for me because I can visualize everything and it's not just written down in a worksheet. Now, if I angle it up for the outlet view, I know that again, I have to go about 40 degrees, but this time it's a cephalid angle or cephalic angle that is towards the patient's head. I can also see where my centering points would be and that it'd be in this case around the greater trochanter if I want the focus to be the pubic rami. Or if I wanted to include the entire pelvis, then this center would become a few centimeters superior and to make sure I have the iliac crest on top. Now, what about the SI joints, the sacroiliac joints? Well, we have the AP and the two obliques, but let's just focus on the latter. Again, I look at the app and I see what best angle would get me through those joint spaces. And it looks like in this case, it'll need to be raised about 30 to 40 degrees on each side. And in terms of the centering and collimation, well, if I want to include this much, I can see that the top of my collimation is the iliac crest and the bottom is just about the greater trochanter. The vertical center roughly aligns with the ASIS and the horizontal center will be a few centimeters medial to the ASIS. And once you see it, it's so much easier because even from all that, I only need to know about two to three things max. The top being the iliac crest, the center being at the ASIS and just a few centimeters in or medial. And with regards to angling up the patient, well, I know I can easily do that with a 45 degree sponge, just putting it right under the patient's right side or left side, whichever you're looking at. And I know that'll be fine because it's essentially it'll equal the 30 to 40 degrees I wanted, you know, because you're using a sponge and it compresses a bit. So now let's say you have a shoulder x-ray request and you've kind of just forgotten where the centering point is. 
So here's what I do. Instead of focusing on what the centering point is, I ask myself, what do I need to include? Well, for a shoulder x-ray, I know I want to include the clavicle, the scapula, and the humeral head, in which the latter two form the shoulder joint. Because remember, the shoulder joint isn't really a thing, it's just where two other bones come together, where they join. Anyway, so if those are my baselines, well, I know that my side-to-side -side collimation, I want a few centimeters off the medial border of the clavicle, and on the other side, I want a few centimeters off lateral to the humeral head. And when you find halfway, it's about there. Now, what about the top to bottom? Well, I basically want to include the skin border and the base of the scapula. And so just by looking at this, you can see that it's roughly there. Now, that's a pretty arbitrary point, but you can just say that it's a few centimeters or roughly this much from below the clavicle, which is something that you can actually palpate. And that's your centering point. It just came about me looking at the anatomy, seeing what I need to include first, and then finding the appropriate centering points, all made a lot easier by just visualizing it. You can also extend this to the internal and external rotation views of the shoulder. You know, whenever I do them, I always do the internal rotation first, just out of habit. So when it comes to labeling them in post-processing, I know which one is which. But not everyone is like that. I know a few radiographers that always do the external rotation view first, whatever their reasoning is. And then let's say you're in charge of post-processing and you label it incorrectly, that's not a good thing. So the question is, how do I know which is which without having to experiment on a patient? Now open up the app and zoom into the shoulder. And what you can do is actually select the anatomy or region of interest, in this case, the shoulder, and then hide or fade other areas so you're just focusing on it. And I'm just gonna fade this other area so it's a bit more clear. Now, if I turn the patient like this, it's equivalent to externally rotating the shoulder and it kind of makes the humeral head look like a lowercase p. And if you do it on the other side, that is the patient's left side, it'll look like a lowercase q. Now, if I turn the patient the other way around, which will be equivalent to internal rotation, that's when you get that light bulb looking sign, which you may have heard of before. And so this is really cool. I can quickly revise which one is which if I've forgotten in the moment, if I need to make a correct labeling. Okay, so the last one I'll talk about are the rib views which are actually one of the ones that causes a lot of confusion for students. Now, there are a bunch of different miscellaneous rib views, but the ones I'm gonna be focusing on are the oblique ones. That is the right and left posterior obliques, AKA the RPO and the LPO, and how they are compared to the right and left anterior obliques, AKA the RAO and LAO rib views. If you're confused on the terminology of the reviews, I've actually made another explainer video, which I'll link that down below for you once it's ready. But anyways, if you forget which one is which, first ask yourself which side is affected. How do I best position the patient to visualize that area? If we start out with the patient facing us, that is the patient's back against the board, they'll be in the AP view, anterior posterior. And let's say their pain is on their right side, somewhere in the mid thorax area. Well, I kind of want to open up that area to visualize the ribs better, and I can do that by rotating the patient towards the board like this. And see how by doing this, the patient's right rib cage kind of opens up nicely, and it's almost laid flat against the detector, if you will. This is what we would call the RPO, a right posterior oblique. Now, if I rotate the patient the other way around, that is to have their left side against the board, that then opens up the left side of the ribs. And what would we call this? The LPO, the left posterior oblique view. And it really helps when you flip the patient around that is now they're facing towards the board for the RAO and the LAO views because the angles are just flipped. You can see now that to open up the ribs, the affected side has to be away from the board. So for example, here, if the patient has their left side against the board, therefore calling it a LAO, a left anterior oblique, then what we're actually really interested in seeing here is the right side, which is away from the board, having the ribs opened up there. And you know, the opposite of that is the RAO, which then highlights the left side. Make sense? It's a bit of a hard one to get your head around, but I really think the visual aspect of the app really helps. At least it did for me, and I hope it does for you too. All right, that's it for this one. Give the app a try. And if there's other free alternatives, use those. It doesn't have to be this one. And let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Now click here to watch this explainer video on the rib views, which I think you'll find quite useful. I'll see you there. Stay curious.